Good morning guys from St. John Pied Port, the starting point of the Camino Frances. I'm gonna start doing the Camino. I'm gonna go all the way to Santiago and doing it this time on a bike for the very first time. If you guys already know, I've done many Caminos here in France and Spain. I've done about 10 in Spain, but decided, you know what? Let's just try something new. Let's do one on a bike. I get here yesterday, like at 11 o'clock at night. And this morning it just, it hasn't stopped raining. It's almost uh, 11 o'clock already, so I'm starting very late in the day simply because I had to pick up the bicycle. I had to set it up with all the extra gear that I brought. Today, I don't know where I'm heading, but since I'm starting off so late, I may actually just go to Roncesvalles or maybe Espinal. I can't follow the Napoleon route, which I've done twice already, because it's just, uh, it's just raining nonstop and it's also very, very uh, windy. So I'm gonna follow the Valcares or the winter route which I've been talking about it so much in all the videos that I guess today you may get to see just a little bit because I don't know how much I will be able to uh, film. So yes, day one, let's go for it. I'm in Roncesvalles, the starting point for the Camino, at least for the Spaniards. But I started yesterday going over the Pyrenees. It was raining so hard that I couldn't even film one shot. Had to take the, the winter route because the Napoleon route was just miserable, according to every pilgrim that I came across here at the Albergue in Roncesvalles. So I think it was a great call. I'm doing it on an e-bike, not even a regular mountain bike. And yesterday I had it on the booster mode just to escape the rain and I made it here in an hour and a half. Today I'm trying to go as far as Pamplona if the battery lasts. So let's get it started. The famous albergue in Roncesvalles dates back to the 12th century when a monastery was built below the Ibañeta Pass to tend to pilgrims. It is run by volunteers and it provides rest and recovery for pilgrims after a challenging first stage over the Pyrenees. The Real Colegiata de Santa Maria, a 13th century Gothic church, is one of the oldest and most important religious structures in the area. With a rich and diverse history, the church has served as a monastery, palace and barracks. It houses a collection of religious artifacts and works of art in its cloister. Nothing embodies both the physical and spiritual challenges of the journey more than the 790 km sign outside Roncesvalles. It reminds pilgrims of the distance they must cover as well as the rewards of personal growth, fulfillment and connection that awaits them along the Camino. The enduring popularity and transformative impact of the Camino de Santiago cannot be understated. All right, already made the first uh, stop along the way at uh, this cafe that I've always walked by and I always wanted to have breakfast there. So I decided, you know what, let's just do it this time around. And I went full out with uh, an omelet, toast, and a cafe con leche. Car. While I was there, I met two pilgrims for the second time. I actually met them yesterday in Roncesvalles. Uh, Pat and Debra Powers and they were so kind to me. They gave me some uh, troll magic It's just the generosity is just incredible. So thank you so much Pat and Debra I hope to see you guys along the way. Here's the first uh, town Burguete It's been raining on and off which kind of sucks for the videos But uh, I will probably compliment uh, the videos especially today With uh, some of the footage from my other Caminos. I don't know. I'm still working out this whole biking situation i know that i get to cover more ground so i'm gonna be i'm gonna be stopping more along the way let's continue it's windy 
It is cold. That's the Camino for you in October. The first stop on today's stage is the town of Burghetti, renowned for its traditional Basque architecture, featuring stone houses, narrow cobblestones and lush gardens. With a rich history and cultural heritage, Burghetti is set in a picturesque landscape surrounded by rolling hills, forests and meadows. This peaceful and scenic setting makes it a popular stop for pilgrims on the Camino, offering amenities such as bars, albergues, a market and an ATM. The Church of San Nicolas de Bari is dedicated to the patron saint of sailors and merchants. Its architecture is influenced by Gothic and Baroque styles featuring intricate carvings, stainless glass windows and a beautiful altarpiece. The town of Espinal, founded in 1262 by King Theobaldo II of Navarra, is the second stop on today's stage. The highlight of the town is the old parish of San Bartolomé, a 17th century church that underwent several renovations and expansions over the years including the addition of two side chapels and three altarpieces. Unfortunately, a fire in 1881 destroyed the church and several houses, but it was reconstructed in the following two years and even received two neoclassical altarpieces. As you make your way down the tranquil streets, surrounded by the serene atmosphere, you will be captivated by the beauty of the flower pots adorning the traditional Basque houses. Oh man, I'm loving this uh, bicycling the Camino. It's just uh, great. Sometimes, you know, it gets steep and that's when I use the motor on the e-bike, but whenever I can, I'm doing it on my own. Let me get off the bicycle for a second because there's a climb up ahead. Now guys, today is September 30th, uh, 2022. And the funny story is that yesterday, September 29th, a year to the date when I did the Via Podiensis uh, from Le Pew in Ballet to uh, St. John Piedipore, then I crossed over to uh, Roncesvalles on the 29th and I continue on to Logroño. But if you guys remember, I stopped vlogging in Puente la Reina. <laughs> Why? Because yesterday's days like yesterday's when it's been uh, raining the whole time. Now, the last time you guys saw me was when I was doing the Via Jebeniensis from uh, Geneva to Le Pew and Valais, the start of the Via Podiensis. And uh, why am I doing the Camino on a bicycle? Well, as you guys know, I've done many, many Caminos on foot and I love it. But I wanted to try something uh, different and this year I've been doing so many different things. Like I started at the beginning of the year, I did the Annapurna and Everest base camp treks. Then I went to Italy and I walked from uh, Florence to uh, La Verna <laughs> along the Via di Francesco, then the Tour de Mont Blanc and then the Via Jebeniensis. So it's been a completely different uh, year, new to me. So I decided, you know what, let's just do it on a bicycle. I've been riding bicycles my entire life. Wow, gust of winds. Yep, at least we're seeing the sun now every now and then. Woo! So yeah, I've been riding uh, bicycles my whole life and I wanted to try it. And uh, why an e-bike? Well, 
that whole experience that I have riding bicycles has been on flat terrain, never on the mountains, still win. And uh, you know, just wanted that extra juice uh, when I needed it. Yesterday I overdid it and today I still got full power, but today it's been downhill the majority of the time. It is already 10.30 on my way to Subiri where I wanted to stop yesterday and then on to Pamplona. After a thrilling bike ride through the rolling hills, lush forests and quiet villages of the Basque Country, taking the occasional detour on surface roads to avoid steep rocky trails, I finally reached Subiri. I'm greeted by a stunning medieval bridge spanning the Arga River. Dating back to the 13th century, the bridge showcases the impressive talent and ingenuity of the medieval engineers who constructed it out of stone. It is one of the oldest bridges in the region and a magnificent, awe-inspiring sight to behold. Subiri is a convenient endpoint for the second stage of the pilgrimage, offering not only a municipal albergue, but a number of private pensiones and hostels. For those strong hikers looking to shorten the next stage to Pamplona, they can continue on the 5.5 km stretch to La Razuaña. Here we are in the town of Subiri, where I was planning to get here yesterday. It's been an easy day, haven't used much of the power on the bicycle <laughs> on today's stage because, uh, you know, I learned from yesterday's uh, mistake, so I keep it, I have different settings. I have like off, eco, uh, tour, sport, and turbo. So I'm keeping it around the tour setting so I, can con I don't have to consume as much uh, power. The sun comes in and out every now and then, it's drizzling for the most part. I had to take a section there on the road because the path I knew from experience that it was going to get very rocky and downhill, so I decided to avoid that. And I think that happens right after that little food truck that you get at the, at the crossing. So yes, there was a section there where I actually had to get off the bike and go uphill pushing it. And it was tough, tougher than doing it on foot because I have a 50 pound uh, bike with another 25 pounds, which is what I brought in uh, clothes and gear, and I will go over that in, uh, in the days ahead, so I don't cram today's video with uh, way too much uh, information. Subiri, man, I like it. It's 11 in the morning, so I think I may have lunch further down the line, and if I get to Pamplona and I'm feeling strong, I may continue on to Puente La Reina. Should I do that? We'll see. After departing to Bidi, the Camino takes you past a large mining factory that can be a nice sore for pilgrims. However, it is not long before the peaceful countryside is once again in sight. The Camino continues along cobblestone paths, surrounded by the natural beauty of the local wildlife in the village of Ilarraz. Not far from Ilarraz is the 12th century Abbey of Esquirots, also known as the Church of St. Lucy. It is listed on the UNESCO World Heritage Site and is registered as a Spanish property of cultural interest. The current owners purchased the fort turned abbey with the intention of restoring the badly neglected structure. You can get a stamp and leave a small donation to help with the restoration efforts.
La Rasuaña is renowned for its well-preserved 12th century Romanesque style stone bridge. Legend has it that bandits used to ambush medieval pilgrims as they crossed the bridge. It is not surprised that it is still referred to as the Bridge of Bandits. The church is dedicated to St. John the Baptist. It's a well-preserved example of medieval religious architecture, with ornate stone carvings and radiant stained glass windows. The municipal albergue provides affordable and convenient accommodations completed with basic amenities for pilgrims seeking rest along the Camino. I decided to continue my journey following the lonesome dirt path along the Arga River on his downhill march towards Pamplona. The peaceful sounds of singing birds and waterfalls accompany me along the way. Quick stop after uh, La Razuaña in this little bar that I like to always stop for a sumo, but this time around they didn't have it, so I just went for a cafe con leche and a big slice of uh, what is it, like a spinach omelet. After indulging in a hearty snack, I hopped back on my bike and took the short stretch alongside the busy N135 road that connects Pamplona to Roncesvalles. After yet another crossing over the Arga River, I found myself face to face with the ruins of an old building. The Camino winds its way through mountainous terrain until it reaches the Airots Bridge. So let's take this opportunity that the path right now is flat, just to talk about uh, this little section there after La Razuaña to uh, the second uh, bridge, the one that I dipped my feet in the cold waters last time, it was just full of mud. My bicycle was sliding, there was a big uh, drop off right there, so it got just a little bit uh, scary. Leaving the bridge behind, I caught up with a group of pilgrims en route to Pamplona. They must have left to Bidi early this morning. This section of the Camino is rocky, narrow, and with a drop-off on the left side of the trail, but my bike handled it with ease. Despite having covered this section for the third time in five years, I was pleasantly surprised at how much fun I was having doing it this time on a bike. The Pyrenees are falling behind my rear view mirror. The last stop before entering the bustling suburbs of Pamplona is La Iglesia de Santa Marina. It is at the medieval bridge in Trinidad de Arre, next to the Basilica de la Santísima Trinidad, a former small pilgrim hospital, where the Camino splits, offering the choice of walking through the city or following the riverside bike trail along the Rio Arga. You know, whether you're on foot or you're doing this on a bike, I highly recommend you enter Pamplona following the river. This will be the alternative route that avoids all the traffic lights and all the suburban area on the approach into the old city. Plus, the scenery here is not bad at all. What do you think? There's nothing like bypassing the industrial and commercial areas on the way into large cities. Sharing the path with the local joggers and cyclists makes it even better. The Magdalena Bridge is one of the most significant of the four medieval bridges crossing the Arga River as it flows through Pamplona. Constructed in the 12th century and renovated in the 14th, it features three large slightly pointed arches, triangular cutwaters, and round arches on its supports. During the Iron Age, a primitive Vascon settlement called Iruña was located in the terrace area along the river's edge. 
In 75 BC, the Roman general Pompey arrived on his way to wage war against Sertorius and established a military settlement that gave rise to the Roman city of Pompeiolo. Around the same time, the renowned Greek geographer Strabo made the oldest known reference to the city in his Geographica. Above Hasetania, heading north, is the nation of the Vascones, whose main city is Pompelon, as they say the city of Pompeii. Isn't it great where you make it to Pamplona and you go under those arches that welcome you into the city? Right now, I'm here in the municipal albergue and I uh, just took my shower, washed my clothes, did the whole thing. You guys know already the routine. Made it here around 2.15 in the afternoon after doing a 46 kilometer day on the bike. Got here with half the battery, so that is not bad. Better than yesterday for sure. I'm gonna head out and have something to eat and drink. Thanks, of course, to uh, Susan, who just sent me some uh, troll magic. Thank you so much, Susan. My shoes are also drying right now because the sun is just out. It, even though I'm wearing the puffy jacket, I'm doing more so for the pockets than the actual uh, temperature. It's nice and, and warm right now. The streets are empty because all the businesses are closed. I guess it's siesta time. The albergue is already full. It didn't take uh, much. Uh, well, let's see, it's 4.20 in the afternoon. So, you know, any time after 2 p.m., you know it's going to start filling up. Even though that albergue has about 150 beds, I believe. We got clear blue skies well, with a few clouds, but I think for the next uh, week or so, I'm going to avoid the rains. So it's going to get better, especially for vlogging, since I don't have to worry about my equipment uh, getting uh, wet. Let's just walk around town. I mean, what else is there to do? This is my plona, after all. Pamplona is most famous for the running of the bulls, an annual event that forms part of the San Fermin festival in July. People run through the streets of Pamplona in front of a herd of bulls, making it one of the most well-known and dangerous bull runs in the world. The city also boasts a well-preserved old town with historical buildings such as the Gothic Pamplona Cathedral, the city walls, and the Citadella Park. Pamplona is also famous for its cuisine, including tapas, stews, and roasted meats, as well as its lively bars, clubs, and theaters. So here's another reason why I'm doing the Camino on a bike. I have planned for next year, for 2023, to ride from Rome all the way to Santiago. So this trip is kind of like a proof of concept. Just wanted to test it out, see if it works. Maybe it was a pipe dream, but so far I'm just having a blast. I'm enjoying riding that bicycle through the trails. Today was better than yesterday. I just need to work out my routine now because the, the Camino is just going by so fast and I'm not filming as much as I'm used to. I've been using the bell on the bicycle as you guys uh, suggested, and it works. I have three bells, but the one that I'm using is the one that I brought because it is the loudest. Pilgrims should visit Santa Maria la Real de Pamplona, a 13th century Gothic cathedral housing works of art, religious relics, such as a 13th century statue of the Virgin Mary, a 17th century silver monstrance, and a reliquary containing the remains of the city patron saint, San Fermin. One of the most notable works of art inside the cathedral is the Gothic altarpiece, which is considered one of the finest examples of Gothic sculptures in Spain. The altarpiece is made of polychrome wood and depicts scenes from the life of Christ, including the nativity and the crucifixion.
You know, as soon as the sun goes down, two things happen here. The people come out and the temperature starts to drop and fast. Already had dinner at this cafe where I had a mojito and some, uh, what is it called, like pinchos, including one with, uh, with shrimp. Thank you, Susan, for that. Thank you so much for the trail magic. That's it for day one, man. Very successful day one, which actually was two. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow is gonna be another one of those days. I think we're kind of leaving the mountains behind. Well, as soon as we cross over the Alto del Perdón. And uh, tomorrow we go through Puente La Reina, which I really like. I may actually take the detour to go see that church once again. And then making my way all the way to Estella. Estela, Estella. That's where I'm staying. By the way, today, I saw more pilgrims showing up at the Abergue, both on foot and on bikes, and they were turned away. So in case that were to happen to me in, at a major city, I still have the option of staying at a pension or you know, using bookings.com, or I can continue on to the next town. That is the freedom that the bikes uh, offer you. Can't believe how much fun I'm having with the bicycle today. It was just incredible. Of course, after it stopped raining. No rain for the next few days, so that's always uh, great news. I'll be able to fly the drone more often. And also when the landscape opens up and I get rid of some of those trees, I can have the drone uh, following me. <sighs> See you guys tomorrow.